What's going on everyone? Welcome back, Patrick here. And in this video, I'm going to determine whether each of these four functions here is one-to-one -one or not. And the way I'm gonna do that is I'm gonna run the horizontal line tests through all of these that we went over in the overview video where I introduce one-to-one -one or injective functions. So starting with number one, we got y equals three x minus two. So notice how this is a line in y equals mx plus b form. So minus two here, that is the y-intercept, that's the b value. So this is like zero, negative two. And then notice that the slope is three, or three over one. So we're basically gonna be rising by three and then running by one. So if we wanna get another point, on this graph, we could plug in one for x, for example. And if we plug in one for x, we'll have three times one minus two, which gives us a y value of one. So we also know that one and one is gonna be a point on this line. So now we've got two points for this line. We can connect the points, and that's how this line is looking. And so notice if we run a horizontal line through this, it's gonna pass the horizontal line test. In fact, all lines besides a horizontal line, which I'm going to show you in number two, basically all lines are one-to-one -one functions because they're always gonna pass that horizontal line test. There's never gonna be two points that are touching. So there's never gonna be uh, multiple X values for a single Y value. So this here, y equals three x minus two, is a one to one. Now, number two, y equals four. Remember, y equals any number. Notice how there's no x variable. That's always gonna be a horizontal line. So y equals four means it's a horizontal line at a y value of four. And notice if we run the horizontal line through this, notice that it fails because at a y value of four, notice that there are multiple x values. In fact, there's an infinite amount of x values. So because there's multiple x values for that same y value of four, right? There's one here, 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 goes on forever, and even infinitely in between these two lines. Because there's multiple x values for a single y value, then we know that it's not one-to-one. -one. And then moving on to number three, this one's a little bit more complex. We got y equals x to the six minus x to the four plus three x squared plus x minus seven. So if you notice, this here is a polynomial function. Because notice that all the terms in this function are in the format x to the power of a where a is some kind of positive number. And you can also have constants here. So I'm gonna take a trip down memory lane here to advanced functions and sort of describe some characteristics. I'll also leave a link in the description box to polynomial functions and advanced functions if you wanna go and review that. And then what I'm gonna do after describing the characteristics is related back to one-to-one -one functions. So, Polynomial functions, again, they're in the format x to the power a, and a is basically a positive number throughout. So if it was a negative number, then that would be a rational function because then that um, exponent term would go down to the denominator. Another thing I wanna mention is, let's say this function had uh, another term like sine x, for example, or maybe like ln x, then it wouldn't be a polynomial function anymore. Basically, all the terms have to be in this format, x to the power of a or plus or minus any constant. So this is a polynomial here, and notice that the degree of this polynomial is six, the degree being the highest exponent. So, a degree of six, that's basically an even degree. And then notice also that the leading coefficient, which is the value in front of the x variable with the highest exponent is one. And so it has a positive 
leading coefficient. And so what that means is that an even degree and a positive leading coefficient, if you remember from advanced functions, the behaviors, the end behaviors, is going to be like this. So it's going to start here. Something's going to happen in the middle. We're not sure what. It would take us a little bit more work to, uh, to figure that out. But what I want to show you in this example is that you don't have to do all that work to figure out whether it's one to one or not. Because if you know that the end behaviors are like this, it doesn't matter what's going on in the middle. So it can maybe like wave like that, let's say. It's going, it's not going to be a one to one function because it's always going to fail that horizontal line test because of those behaviors, right? There's always going to be multiple X values for a single Y value. This Y value here, it's going to have multiple X values, whether uh, it's going to have at least two or more. And so what I want to kind of get at is basically all even degree polynomials are not one to one because their end behaviors are either like this or if that leading coefficient is negative it's going to be like this right so it always has to go back down to that negative infinity or go back up to that positive infinity. And because of those end behaviors, it's always gonna fail that horizontal line test. So all even degree polynomials are not one-to-one. -one. The best example of that is just a regular parabola, x squared. If you remember from the overview video, I said that all parabolas are not going to be one-to-one. -one. And that's an even degree polynomial, right? Because that uh, highest degree is always gonna be two. So if we had maybe like a parabola that opens down, right, it's going to fail that horizontal uh, line test. Or if we had a polynomial with a higher degree, so there's maybe more going on in the middle, right, it's always going to fail that horizontal line test. So again, I'll, uh, it's not too crucial to go over, but I'll put links where you could review the um, characteristics of polynomial functions. It'll be a link to the uh, advanced functions course. But uh, just keep this in mind, all even degree polynomials are not one-to-one. -one. So they can give you something really complex, a really complex polynomial where you look at it, you don't know really how to graph it. But if it has an even degree, then you know right away because of those end behaviors, it's not going to be one-to-one. -one. Now, one thing I want to mention is that this doesn't apply. I'll write that down actually doesn't apply to odd degree polynomials. Okay, odd degree polynomials, they can be either one to one or not one to one. So only even degree polynomials are not one to one, but odd degree polynomials, they can be either one to one or not one to one. And I'll show you an example of that with number four. So notice with number four, we got x to the power of three minus x. So let's uh, rewrite that here. We got y equals x to the three minus x. If I factor this, I could take out an x, and then I'll have x squared minus one. And then notice that I could factor this x squared minus one to x plus one, and then x minus one. That's a difference of squares. So notice because it's in factored form now, I can get the x-intercept. So notice there's an x-intercept of zero, there's an x-intercept of uh, negative one, and then there's an x-intercept of positive one. So if I graph this out, just by graphing multiple x-intercepts, we could tell that this is not one-to-one -one because it's gonna fail that horizontal line test. So the way that uh, this polynomial looks here, it's an odd degree and it has a positive leading coefficient of one, meaning the end behaviors are like this. So it's gonna look something 
like that. And so notice that it's going to fail the horizontal line test at multiple points. It's going to fail it over here, right, for that same y value. There's going to be multiple x values. But we didn't even have to graph this. Just by looking at the x-intercepts, notice that for that y value of 0, there are multiple x values, negative 1, 0, and positive 1. And so we know that this is not one-to-one. -one. So that's an example of an odd degree polynomial that's not one-to-one. -one. But if you remember in the overview video, I also went over x to the power of 3. And x to the power of 3, the way that looks, is like this. And I mentioned in the video that this function in particular is one-to-one -one because it passes that horizontal line test. So this is an example of an odd degree polynomial that is one-to-one, -one, and this is an example of an odd degree polynomial that isn't one-to-one. -one. So that's how odd degree polynomials are sometimes tougher to work with, but even degree polynomials, whenever you see it, always they're all not one-to-one.